Hello guys, welcome to the stream. My name is Leila. Leila Visku. Uh, welcome back for those who know me and know what's going on. For those who don't, also welcome. We're making Zelda. Let me put my phone on to not disturb. Let's chill and sculpt. How are you guys today? Let me bring up Zelda. Yeah, I think we're all set. Make it Happy Independence Day. Oh, of which country? Do a backflip? I don't think I can. I possibly could, but I don't think I would land uh, properly. And you still need me, right? I need myself to finish this sculpt. Hi Layla. Hi Jace. No, I wanted to show you guys, if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you haven't seen it, but um, since the last stream, I changed Zelda's face quite a bit. I just wanted to show it off. <laughs> Might look a bit goofy. Because, well, she looked goofy. She had sort of like a squished skull. Which I have fixed. And yeah, overall, just changing proportions of the face, lifting her ears up, and repainting uh, her skin entirely really did the trick. Not to say that I'll never touch it again, but it's in a much better place right now. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do backflips on Zebra Stream. Not exactly athletic. Um, don't think I could do a backflip. I can do a headstand, but not gonna do it on stream again. Okay, let's get going. I wanted to make her headpiece quickly show you guys. This thing, and then we could maybe either model the tear itself, or the Master Sword, as I promised. That could be a fun piece of Geo to model, with Z Modeler. Here it is.
What did you start with during your studies in the first years as a 3D artist? Um, are you able to do a full anatomy sculpt close to real look? Uh, what did you start with? I started with just busts, sculpting busts, mostly stylized, just because cartoon characters always interested me more than like real life characters or like stuff for movies. Um, I think I've attempted some likeness portraits in realism when I was studying, but after that, I very quickly found out that I like stylized stuff, so I um, sort of delved deeper into that, and now I'm trying to switch my style from very um, like exaggerated facial features and like very stylized look to a semi-stylized look. Am I able to do a full anatomy sculpt? Yes. Of course, everyone's able. Is it gonna be good? It might be okay. I'm just not interested in it, that's it. Nor do I think that realism defines the skill. A lot of people think that stylization is easier than realism, and I don't agree with that. I think they both have their own difficulties. An artist working solely in realism for years will struggle with stylization. And same goes the other way. To find this middle ground. Let's duplicate Zelda and do something like this. Hola. Hi, Carlos. Um, R is asking, hello, do you think AI can be inserted into ZBrush like Photoshop? Oof. I wouldn't want for it to happen. To be fair. Also, I don't think it's gonna happen in the near future uh, for many reasons, moral and technical. That's loud. Let me know if you can hear me clearly. Um, so, for technical reasons, in the past few months, years, what we have seen from AI um, is mostly 2D stuff and it really struggles to achieve a cohesive look across like a span of camera turns so if you were to give a prompt to an AI tool to draw the same character from many angles it will struggle because it will add like extra lines and it will misinterpret certain areas We'll give it 10 fingers on each hand and stuff like that. I don't think it's there yet to uh, do much stuff in 3D, in terms of like 3D modeling. Although I've seen some attempts of it, um, which kind of look promising, maybe in the future. But I don't think it's there yet to be implemented anywhere. Use this tablet or con your mouse, ZBrush. Um, I assume you're asking about the mouse or a tablet. I'm using a tablet. Um, how much time should I practice in a day to be a pro after three years? You can be a pro in a year <laughs> if you want to. Um, but then, what's the rush? Are you in a rush somewhere? Like, I'm not a pro, and I've been sculpting for 2000... for almost like 7 or 8 years. I 
I've only been in ZBrush for six. Okay. And to finish the point about AI, um, moral reasons, I don't think Maxon will agree to use AI. Don't quote me on that, I don't know, it's just my opinion. Just because of, um, like, a legal standpoint, there are currently a lot of um, legal cases going on, from what I've heard, um, that involve AI usage and what is right, what is fair, because it does um, sort of train itself on the database of artworks from other people so if there were no artworks in the world ever made ai wouldn't exist it would not be able to create anything that what that's the main difference between ai and the human ai needs something to base um the art from if there was no art there would be nothing to base it off like, you'd argue that there is photography and stuff. But photography is still art, also created by a human. All it can do is imitate. And imitation is a touchy topic. No, I don't want to go on a rant about it. Um, yeah, I don't think so. you make a gorilla? I'm not gonna make a gorilla because I'm making Zelda. Can I make it? Yes. Do I want to? No. Again guys, I'm not taking any requests right now. I'm currently working on a model um, for my personal project. So, no gorillas today. It would be fun way to practice um, animal anatomy though, so I'll consider it. Hi Layla, this is looking amazing. Thank you. Oh, Ian is here. Hi Ian. Yeah, slowly but surely chipping away at all of the details that Zelda's got in the new game. There are so many details. 
Um, say hi to Ian in the chat. He's one of the um, Max on, I think, official trainers and a streamer here. And he loves Zelda stuff. As far as I know. Uh, your model looks amazing. Thank you. Just wanted to pop in and say hi. Hey, hey. Hi. Hi. I love this character you're making. Do you have any beginner tips? Um, sure. Most of the stuff that I do is sort of beginner friendly. Uh, if you roll back to the first stream on this character, which was like well over a month ago, you'll be able to find it. You'll see how I block out characters with primitives. Uh, that's quite a beginner friendly approach in my opinion. So yeah. And I try to explain stuff as I go along, but if you are unsure about any of the steps, you can just message me and I'll break it down for you. I love that you're using this apology brush. Yeah, that's good. I primarily use it for like all the details to kind of stick to the surface. I used it for the ornaments and the dress as well. I'm gonna use it some more for the headpiece that she's wearing. Hey Ian, if you know, um, is there any logic to how Topology Brush is creating or not creating the polygons? So I know there are like intersection points where the green dots are, but sometimes it just does not want to connect. Is it because I have like two of them in here? Do I? Okay, let's bring it down to zero, and if we hit it, it should create a plane. Yeah, that's good. Now we have this topology that we can smooth out. So... I started watching the beginning of the series earlier this week and I got me motivated to start learning 3D modeling. Oh, that's cute. Um, just wanted to say you're an amazing at what you do and it shows that you worked hard to get where you are at. Thank you so much. It's really nice to hear. Much nicer to hear than comments about me being talented, to be honest. Because I have a bit of a weird relationship with the word talent. Maybe just my thing, that the way that I interpret this word. But it's really nice to hear, thank you. Do you 3D print? I've tried it in the past, yeah. But I don't currently 3D print. I don't have a printer to begin with. I used to have one. I actually won a really cool printer in a... 3D competition in ZBrush Sculptoff. It's a yearly 
three-hour competition where a bunch of artists get together live and you're given a topic and you create an artwork according to the topic. Um, then you have to upload it within the time limit and then you're done. And I want a 3D printer, the form 1 or for form 2. Was it form free? <laughs> I don't remember. A really cool 3D printer if you know about you. If you know about it, you know. What I mean. But unfortunately, um, my space is too small for it and doesn't have any ventilation whatsoever. There's only one window that opens. And for 3D printing, you do need good ventilation. Uh, if I were to print stuff with it, I would just suffocate myself and my neighbors. Oh, what type of printer do you, what did you make? Um, before that I had like my own small one that I got. It was Creality 3D LDH something printer. It's a resin one, the one that prints upside down. It was really fun to watch, but the odor that I was making, oh, that was intense. That's what I mean by a good ventilated space is needed. Did you paint it as well? I think I did. It was one of my um, Sculptober artworks. If you have seen my Instagram or art station, I did a whole month of sculpting like a character each day for 30 days uh, based off different topics. And one of them I 3D printed and painted. He's got this polar group. This stuff and this stuff. What's my art station? Just wrong side. Type in Layla V School into my art into art station and you'll find me. I don't know if I can send links in the chat. I can try. Let me know if you can see it. There. Ah, uh, send a link for the stream chat, Layla. Cool, oh, didn't know that. I sort of want to make sure that it sits flush against the surface and I've moved some stuff and you can see it's no longer like uniform so I'm gonna save first <laughs> just in case the first decide to crunch because that has happened to me in the past and then a Z project brush with RGB turned off And we'll see how what it looks like. Yep. Better. I 
I might add an extra edge loop going around all the groups like so Not quite happy with it because I want some more support loops before I, do, before I do that. Turn on symmetry. Okay. Bit better. See what it does to the geometry if I add support loops vertically as well. Uh, it's not too bad. You have the power. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. It's been like, what, almost half a year since I started streaming here. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, that little thing in mine. <laughs> hello, hello, Prashan. Hello, Hero Graphics. What artists inspire you the most or influence your work and style the most? Oh, that's easy. That's um, a Russian artist, Olya Anufriva. She used to stream here. That's her stuff. I learned most of ZBrush from her. This guy, Nikita Veprikov, I think he's from Ukraine, very inspirational, really cool shapes and forms and the way he works, it's just insane. Yeah, and many, many more. <laughs> I can sit around and show you all the artists that inspire me the whole day. But there are just way too many. I like to say that I get inspired by people, by artists. Artists that are inspired by someone else. And I forgot to add a support loop here. What are the requirements to the streams on this channel? Can anyone stream? I don't think anyone can stream. Um, you can message Zebras guys and uh, show your portfolio. 
and um, yeah, that's all I can say. It's about building a relationship uh, with them. I think ZBrush was doing this thing where they were looking for artists to stream with, and I just messaged my, like I emailed my portfolio, and we got talking with Ian and the crew, and I hopped on board. But I do believe you have to have a certain level of skill. Hi! Hi, Emon! Welcome to the stream! Okay, let's try extruding it and see how bad it looks. That's odd. Oh, look. Interesting. For some reason, it doesn't want to respect the polar group. Oh. Oh well. Um, actually, it's pretty good. I thought it would be worse. But there are a few things I want to change before I commit to that. Okay, let me roll back. When are you streaming? Love your works. <laughs> Okay, so it's much cleaner now. Still not 100% happy with how the current corners turned out. But hey, you can't have it all. So I'm just gonna try and nudge it into place. Like so. What is the name of this software? It's ZBrush. Hmm. 
and you're most likely on ZBrush's channel or Facebook page. Okay, so I went a bit too deep with the extrusion there. That's okay. It's better. Now a little bit more. What's going on there? I thought I saw some weird... Ah, oh, never mind. Everything's fine. Jeez. Well, that happens sometimes. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. No, guys, this is pretty boring. Me modeling this thing. But it's kinda... Gotta get done. Again, if you have any questions for me in terms of what I'm doing or how I'm doing, you can drop them in the chat. I'm happy to just chat about stuff. Not boring at all. Ah, thank you. What if I do some polish by grips? Ah. This way it looks... Um, Oh, it's gonna be such a niche reference. If you've ever seen in like OG Spongebob show, like very early episodes when the art style was a bit different. There was an episode when they went to like, I think a, like a deep sea uh, entertainment park. Um, like amusement park, sorry. And they got stuck there with Patrick and they had like balloons shaped like that. Okay, so it doesn't work. Maybe polish will? No. So I'm sort of happy with this shape for now. Uh, let's add the middle, the gem in the middle that she has. It's good to see how other artists problem solve. Oh, that's good to hear. Hey, Layla. 
Hi, Gazzy. If you don't mind me, mind telling me what is basically does. Uh, what what does um, ah, the software? What it allows you to make characters or weapons or any 3D model that you want, like props. Um, just you can model anything in ZBrush. Basically, it gives you a set of primitives that you can work with. Let's say a sphere. And you can treat it as a sphere of clay. And you can push and pull and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. There is a set of brushes, a big set of brushes that you can use to just make whatever your heart desires. So yeah, this is ZBrush. Great work, do you ever use Blender and Maya for specific modeling tools? I use Maya, I actually, I use it at work, but recently, ever since I started learning Z Modeler more, I almost never switched to Maya anymore from ZBrush, and it's so liberating. I don't have to switch between software and export out stuff and import it back in, and then there's scale difference, and it's so annoying. So keeping everything in ZBrush is just easier for me. Um, I've used Blender in the past, when I just started out in 3D, because it was free, obviously. And back then I didn't know if I wanted to pursue it or not as a career, so it just made sense to use a free software. But I fell in love with it, and then later on I got an internship in the company and they were only using Maya. Well, not only, but they were using Maya for production. So I had to kind of switch. But it was back in 2015, and I know that more and more studios now um, use Blender, or are okay with artists using Blender. This character is already looking amazing. Thank you. It's looking great. I love the style. Thanks. Uh, Shadow Hero Graphics. Do you usually texture your characters in ZBrush or do you prefer using other software? I like using ZBrush in conjunction with Substance Painter. That's my workflow. But I definitely paint the diffuse values in ZBrush. Like, I'm gonna show you. There's quite a bit of like diffuse information in here that I'm gonna transfer to the next software. Which for me is Substance, for some people it's Mari, or 3D Coat. For me it's Substance. Okay, so this piece is done. Two more to go. And then there are some connecting pieces as well. So this one, this one, this one will be easy. This one will require a bit of fiddling around. But that's okay. It's nothing we haven't done before. I'm not well versed with ZBrush. Some things are easier to create for me using 3D software packages instead of sculpting tools. That's just me though. Well, there's a... Not a sculpting tool, but Z Modeler tool. Which is... Um, not about sculpting at all. It's basically your tool set from Maya or 3ds Max or... Cinema 4D or Blender. For me, it has all the tools that I need. There is crease, there is like delete polys, bridge polys, bevel them, insert points, insert edges, then some of them I've never used before. Uh, unweld, weld, 
scale. Like, everything I need isn't here. It's just a matter of... Am I dedicated to learning every single button? And for me, answer is yes. Doesn't necessarily have to be a yes for you, but it can make your life easier. Just because, as I said before, it can be quite frustrating if your scale is not the same between ZBrush and your software of choice. Then... It can be frustrating because you'll need to like reproject details and then keep track of like the scale differences and scale it up and down. Um, because sometimes you'll import a model from another software and it's the correct scale, but then the ZBrush's brush only goes this big, and then you need it to be bigger for your character. So it can be a bit tricky, you need to find a good balance. Hi, в смысле, здравствуйте, здравствуйте. Um, serious, I'll look into learning the modeler. <laughs> yeah, do that. Um, Michael Pavlovich on this channel, he does a lot of streaming that involves like hard surface modeling and just modeling in general, and he uses Z modeler a lot. And I've learned a lot of stuff from him. How long did it take you to fully learn how to use the software? I don't know how to use the software fully yet. <laughs> As I said, I don't know what all the buttons in the Z modeler do. Not all of them, like some of them are just a mystery to me. And I'm okay with that because I know a big chunk of it. And I'd say you can you like you can learn about UI and like what the main like 20 buttons do in maybe the first month of learning ZBrush. Sorry, I'm gonna close that. Okay, let's duplicate her body again. For those who don't know, this character's name is Zelda. She is one of the protagonists of uh, the Zelda series. I like Nintendo games. It's been going on for ages. Just making sure because some people in the past have jumped on stream and were like, oh, that's a nice goblin. <sighs> She's not a goblin, she is a Hylian, which is a race in the game of people, of just basically humans with pointy ears. That have descended from the clouds. Just a bit of a geek talk for you. And by the clouds I mean they used to be like floating islands up in the sky where Hylians used to live. She's one of them, and I'm pretty sure she's like a royal descendant. I think it's part of her character through different series. I mean, the same series, different installments of the series. Um, she possesses this power of wisdom.
basically each game she knows how to save the world from ending. One more basic question, how do you access the modeler in ZBrush? You just hit B on your keyboard and here it is at the bottom middle area. Just click on it and it activates and now you have the modeler brush. Michael is amazing too, I learned a lot from his streams. Yeah, he's great. Very informative. I should learn from him because sometimes I will just zone out and stay quiet for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh right, I'm supposed to talk. But sometimes you guys are very quiet and I forget that I'm working on the stream. doesn't fully fit on her forehead. Maybe we'll push her ha a hair back a bit. Blah, blah. What's, what's up with my tongue today? Push her head, not, not her head, push her hair back a bit. Like so. It's a bit funny right now, but this space will get occupied pretty quickly. Also, I can take some creative liberties with it and make it shorter. I hope no Zelda fans get offended by it. Is she Link's girlfriend? I think so. <laughs> Although it will depend on the installment again. I'm pretty sure she was his girlfriend in um, Skyward Sword because they were like super cute teenagers in there. And here in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom they're like these anxious teenagers that need to save the world from evil. And um, as far as I am in the game, there isn't much romance between them. They're like, they care for each other, obviously. But it's hard to tell because Link is a silent protagonist. And you don't hear him speak very often. I live in Bangladesh, our country is so developing. I want to learn 3D animation and working with models. Where can I learn to use this software? You can learn it here. Um, so you, I can see you're on Facebook. Um, you're messaging from Facebook. So chances are you're on the correct page. You can jump on to like YouTube channel or the saved streams on Facebook. I'm not sure how it works. And there is just a ton of learning material from me or from other uh, streamers here. We're all pretty good, you know, just pick and choose your flavor. That's how I learned. I just learned off streams. Somewhere on Zebrish's channel, somewhere on just individual artists' channels on YouTube. And I watched every single one of them from each artist that inspired me, that ever streamed. I watched it and I learned everything they know. Okay, so this shape is almost done, just a few more tweaks. 
And I wonder if I wanna <laughs> Z model it or if I wanna try and run Z remesher on it. It can work both ways. Oh, sorry, I missed. Do you have all the details on your YouTube channel? It's not my YouTube channel. Uh, it's Hebrushes. But yeah, there are so many streams there. You can cho choose from. Is it okay for Portfolio to do a fan art model like this? Yeah, why not? I'm gonna put it in my portfolio. I mean, it's got anatomy, it's got... Still, it's got a style from me that I'm following. Um, so why not? Z Classroom has lots of materials to learn. Yep. Is Cinema 4D like 59 bucks a month? Sorry, I'm not really uh, aware of the pricing for Cinema 4D right now. You can check it on the official website, but I wouldn't know. Let's try Z remesher. Let's just try it. And yes, I am being lazy. Bad. Not good. That's pretty good. We can work with that, I reckon. I'll just need to fuse a few things. So here's where Z Modeler comes into play. Just gonna get rid of some nasties that Z Remesher has created. He did a pretty good job, to be fair. Let's delete this one. We don't want any triangles in here. Um, okay. Now, let's try and reduce the poly count a bit. So I'm just showing you the alternative to using the topology brush which could have worked very well here it just takes longer uh, to get the results that you want Almost done, I just need to push some loops towards where the turning points are, so it maintains the harsh edges. Um, if any of you are in the gaming industry, it probably doesn't make sense, but I don't work in the gaming industry, so for animation production, that's how we roll.
um, just to know at school they told us not tomorrow that uh, has already been done at 3 but always wanted to do like Pokemon or Zelda character. No, you definitely should. Zelda has never been done this way. My way. Plus, I don't know why they said that. There are certain jobs that require you to make fan art of other, like IP, like let's say characters in Fortnite, right? They are based off certain IPs that already exist in 3D. But someone got a job as a character artist to make those existing IPs into playable characters. They had to model the same character just in a different art style that fits Fortnite. Um, stylistic. Uh, st a stylistic, um, well, area. Well, I wouldn't agree with your tutors. I think you should be making stuff that interests you because that's how you show your character. That's how you get hired, actually, in my experience. And what I mean by that is that employers look at your portfolio, yes, they also look at your soft skills. How will you perform during the interview? But they also pay attention to what kind of person you are. Are you into golf or are you into video games? Are you into this or into that? Because some employers care about what, how, how good of a match you'll be to the existing team of artists. Will you have similar interests? Will you fit in well? I'm not saying it's a deciding factor, but it's good to show your personality for your artworks. If you look at my portfolio and you know anything about like games and stuff, you'll know I'm a huge geek. And I'm okay with that. Oh yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. I didn't really help you <laughs> because you asked about Cinema 4D, but you can check out the website. Oh yeah, I see now. Awesome. What did you ask? Uh, what are you doing? I am making a character. Fruit Loops. Start asking where is the best place to learn Cinema 4D? I wouldn't know because I work in ZBrush, but I would imagine Maxon channel will have a Cinema 4D dedicated um, channel. Let me check. Now they mostly have ZBrush, don't they? Yeah, sorry, I wouldn't know, um, just because I don't use Cinema 4D. I mainly use ZBrush. So cool, thank you. I think they wanted to force us to model based on 2D concept, but yeah, thanks. Oh, modeling of 2D concepts is great. It's a really good skill to have and you'll most probably need it uh, when you get a job. But there is nothing wrong with modeling a fan art. 
what is the average poly count of a character for animation? Average. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a number for you. I can show you what how dense the wireframe should be. But I cannot tell you um, what is the poly count because some characters will have crazy amount of details on them and some won't. Some of them will be stylized and they'll be short and cute and chubby, like very stylized, very simplistic. And they'll have lower poly count and some of them will be hyper real characters that will need twice as many polys as this one. So, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> I can ask you, what do you think about AI art? I think I went on a bit of a rant about AI in the beginning of the stream. Basically, I'm not a supporter of AI, but I don't think I will be anytime soon unless my job um, will depend on it like if it gets implemented into our workflow at work uh, okay I'll learn how to use it but until then I'm not gonna support it just because it goes against my values and what I stand for which is um, Well, basically, the morale here that I'm trying to follow is not to uh, not to get popularity or even like some sort of financial benefit from basically feeding a bunch of works of one artist into this AI tool and just outputting hundreds of them in the same art style that the person has worked on and has developed over like decades sometimes. And they just feed it through this AI tool and create fake accounts on ArtStation, Instagram, Twitter, and they post it and people follow. People who are not artists they follow and they say, oh that's so amazing, can you paint this or draw that? And I just see it and I get angry because uh, they haven't done any work and hey, I can actually recognize the art style of this person that I've been following for years. Oh, that sucks. So that's kind of my take on it. I have this feeling that it's very unfair. But as a helping tool, um, what they implement into Photoshop, it can do wonders. Like, it's great at just lowering the barrier of entry for people who want to draw or um, like that want to do photography and it's great to the point and then it's not. When um, someone is gonna start using it not for the purpose of creating art or content, but for purpose of like accusing people of doing something wrong. Like, do you need a photo really quick to prove that you were at a certain place at a certain time? Boom, you can just type it in. Uh. Not cool.
Okay, one last part that sort of connects to her braid. Is this one? It's a bit hard to see the shape from the front, so I'm gonna try and look for it from a different angle. I've been playing Zelda, I mean, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, the past few weeks, and I've been taking screenshots. Uh, it's been a lot of fun because I'm like playing the game and I zone out and I like read the text because I'm like really immersed into the story and then I'm like, oh, gotta take screenshots for the for the stream and I start just like uh, taking screenshots very fast. Sometimes I miss it and I'm like, damn, that would have been a great uh, reference from the profile view. <laughs> That just tells you how immersive the game is. Oh wow. <laughs> For some reason I had the scroll bar a bit high up and I wasn't seeing any new messages that were popping up. I was like, oh, the chat is kind of quiet, and then there are like 10 messages. Uh, what type of work should I showcase in my portfolio as a character artist so that I would not look like a fresher? What type of work or details should I focus on? Uh, I wouldn't say it's about what kind of detail you should focus on. Um, I'd say pick the best work that you've ever made. And if you have anything that is old, like at least like a year old, and it's still okay, but you're not super proud of it, we'll have artworks like that. Don't worry. Um, I'd say archive it and only display the best work that you've done. It's better to have three very strong artworks rather than have ten where they're all mixed because you're gonna get judged by your worst artwork, not by your best one. So... Be selective. I know it's hard because of how much time we all spend and put in all of those art pieces. Uh, but I myself clean up my art station every half a year when I see that certain artworks no longer align with the art style that I'm sort of uh, trying to represent myself um, by. Then I just get rid of them. And it's hard because sometimes I'll spend months on an artwork and then I take it down. Are you going to paint her in substance? Yes, I will. But I will utilize the like the paintwork that I have already done in the brush. So I'm just gonna quickly put a timer because otherwise I'll keep on talking forever. Thank you, you're welcome. Uh, I'm with your opinion. Oh, that's, that's great. It's also okay not to agree with me. Hi, nice job, thanks. Are you from Ukraine? No, but I'm from somewhere very, very close, which is Moldova. It's a neighboring country to Ukraine, and I actually spent most of my childhood summer time in Ukraine. I have a lot of friends there. I still do. What do you do for stay focused on your work when you don't stream? Um, I guess my advice on that wouldn't be valid because I'm a bit of a workaholic and staying focused on sculpting isn't the thing that I struggle with. I'm always sculpting. <laughs> and I'm mostly like if I were to not talk and just work, I would work for eight hours straight 
with some breaks for food and bathroom and for stretch. But yeah, I am just focused all the time. Sometimes I wish I wasn't because it started to give me headaches, like full on migraines uh, at the age of 22. <laughs> So I would advise for you guys to chill from time to time, but don't push yourself too hard if you want to go a long way. Uh, hi, the character looks amazing. Thanks for some techniques. I learned a couple of things here. I agree with you about AI. You have a good point of view. Uh, you're welcome. I'm happy I could help. And yeah, I seem to share the same opinion with a lot of 2D and 3D artists on the topic of AI. I found a, a niche usage for AI. I use it to create concept busts that I then use for my daily one-hour portrait sculpts. It saves me 20 minutes every day since I don't need to search for generic face refs. I would be very careful if I were you. Um, it's a good tool because like it motivates you and you sit down and you do the work but I wouldn't use AI solely as your source of reference because it is a trained tool and it takes a thousand images and it kind of like mushes them together and then outputs an image based on all of them so it estimates how far away the ear should be from, let's say, your eyes in the profile, how low the lips should be. Sometimes it will add like an extra vein that doesn't exist on the face. Sometimes it will add an extra bone sticking out that does not necessarily exist there. So yeah, be careful. You can use it. Just use it in conjunction with actual anatom uh, anatomical reference and you only need to create a board of an anatomical reference once and then reuse it just download pure ref uh, get a bunch of female and male heads and busts and whatnot from different angles you can use 3d scan uh, there are some really good 3d scans out there not for free but for like five to ten bucks that you can use for reference well, nice work. Thank you. The last one is like a hair clip. Yeah, it is. Sorry, I've been talking the past 10 minutes. I stopped working. I will get back to it as soon as I read the chat. To clarify, I'm not using the AI work as actual references. A lot of times it creates nonsense anatomy, but I use a general idea of it. Yeah, that's all good. Using AI as another tool is okay as long as you say you used AI and as long as it's your art and not someone else's. Uh, yes and no. You should, not should, you must use an AI tag for sure. Um, because it's only fair. But I wouldn't say it's just your artwork because it's not. You didn't paint it. You type in some words, uh, given they were carefully selected, and you tried to do a couple of prompts. So there were some failures, there were some successes. You did spend some time on it, maybe 20 minutes, maybe an hour. But it still does not compare to like 12, 20, 80 hours of work of a 3D artist that is meticulously been sculpting uh, the same character. Um, it's still art, but I do not agree with calling it your own art because it was based off files of other people, uh, colors that other people have chosen that work together, that don't clash against each other. It's all knowledge that people possess. AI does not possess that knowledge. It has a certain algorithm that can kind of like 
steal stuff from different artworks that works. Composition, lighting, shading, texturing. Um, but yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, do you have a personal streaming channel? I do. Actually streamed yesterday for the first time in a few not in a few months in probably like a year no in the past half a year but i'm trying to make it a more of a consistent thing it's a bit hard because i also stream here once a week but yeah you can subscribe to my channel if you want the past stream was about feedback uh, people have submitted their artworks on my Instagram and Telegram, and they got feedback. If that's something you're interested in, well, subscribe to my Instagram, because I'll post updates there whenever I start streaming again. I mean, uh, whenever I take on the next batch of um, artworks to review. Hmm. Okay, let's model the hair clip. I'll get back to your chat, but I've been sitting around for the past 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Same as always, duplicate it. I'm going lower. will be pretty easy to make out of, I mean, with the topology brush. So I'm not gonna use the remesher this time. Doesn't want to switch. Hmm. Something new. Uh, okay, let's save. Yes.
What if I reset? Weird. Maybe it's a bug. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But it doesn't want to select the modeler. How many hours per day you sculpt? It depends, because sometimes I'll need to model something, or UV unwrap something, or texture. So sometimes it can be zero. But when I do sculpt at work, it's the whole day, it's eight hours. And then on those days, sometimes I stream for two and a half, two hours or so. Um, so yeah, can be like from eight to 12 hours a day. Because after the stream, I can also like do some personal stuff on the side or work some more on projects like Zelda. So sometimes it's just crazy amount of hours. Hey Layla. Hey Defro. After learning anatomy, what are st the steps to go f towards perfection and character art? Perfection and character art. I love the wording. I don't know. <laughs> because I haven't reached it yet. Like, if you look at my previous streams, Zelda didn't look this way. She looked this way. And it wasn't perfect, and so I improved it. But then, she's not done yet. There are so many areas that still need to fix, like her hands. Um, they are not done. Her feet are like stubby at the moment, that's why I don't zoom out. Because I haven't fixed them yet. What are the steps? I, I'd say just make small improvements here and there. Uh, learn anatomy, that's a big one. And then study artworks with other people that inspire you. And by study I mean like actually sit down and look at them and analyze them like, okay, what makes them look good? Is it composition? Is it the colors that they use? Is it the lighting? And try to imitate it. Not copy. Imitate. Exactly, that's what I meant. Okay, got it. Did you sometime use Nomad Sculpt? I don't have an iPad, so no. I would be really keen if I ever get an iPad. I would want to get a Nomad Sculpt. What was the other one? Forger? Hello there. Hi, Sleepy Mushroom. Your voice sounds truly mesmerizing. Thank you. Derpy Zelda. Love the goofy look of the previous sculptor. <laughs> she did look goofy, didn't she? But She looked look more like a mushroom. Okay, so... As I said, my ZBrush is not cooperating, as you can see. I'm really trying to work here, but it doesn't want to, so I think I saved just now. Yeah. Um, let's do it again. Sculpting in Nomad is fun, but only if you want to model cute, silly stuff. Oh really? I've seen some, like, gory monster stuff being done, like, on an iPad. Hey, let's try again. Yeah, now it's working. Weird, must have been some sort of a bug. Or maybe I pressed something, not sure. Now let's see if we go in here. If I hold down control, 
and the yellow square in the middle, it will inflate the mesh, which will naturally push it towards the surface. This is what we want. Although... Hmm... It's kind of sitting against the main kind of um, airlock piece, but then minus a bit too wide, I guess. Well, so it should be here. Oh, you can make them, but in my experience, I would go into ZBrush for complex characters, not that you can't do them in Nomad. Yeah, I understand that it's more of a sketch 3D sculpting software, then you can bring it into ZBrush um, and finish it here. Um, it's still a cool thing. Oh uh, yeah, the obligatory ZBrush crash, truly the most perfect software. It didn't crash. I closed it. It's like everything, you just need to know how to take advantage. Yep, fair enough. Should you be mean to ZBrush? First of all, it didn't crash. Second of all, yes, it does have bugs here and there. But it's amazing overall, what it can handle, the amount of polygons I throw at it every single time I sculpt. It's insane. Every software has its bug lol. Yep. ZBrush is the most perfect 3D software. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it comes close. If I were to rank all the softwares I've ever used, it would be at the top. For sure. I feel like I angled it the wrong way. Should go this way. Love-hate relationship with ZBrush, but it's the best. Uh, cute. 
you learn to love it. Oh god, it's so good, the model. Thank you. Deep brush isn't perfect, but it's very good at what it does. That is true. I didn't even want to be a 3D modeler until I found Deep brush. I've heard that feedback a lot. A lot of people will struggle with like finding, drawing 3D modeling in any other 3D software. But then they get into ZBrush and they're like, oh my god, it's so much fun. I want to do it every single day. They talk like addicts, you know? <laughs> ZBrush is addictive. I never hear, oh my god, I loved modeling in Maya. Those, like, beveling tools or those crease tools are amazing. Or like, oh, Blender is so good. People say that, but it's not the same amount of craziness as it is with ZBrush. People get hooked. <laughs> I didn't try it, I don't have the money. Oh, you don't... I mean, you can try out the ZBrush Core Mini, if you want. There's a free... Kind of like a neutered version of ZBrush. If you ever go to university uh, for like 3D art, they will have ZBrush there as part of the course, for sure. Alright, I'm not digging this track. I'm gonna switch. I hate to be that person that switches the music right in the middle of it. Okay, so I'll leave it as that. There are a few more connecting pieces and I'll probably add like some sort of um, holes in all of them to connect them all. And then I'll kind of feed a, f a piece of thread through it with um, one of my brushes, like this one. Yeah, so something like that actually. Might be a bit too thick though. What is that? Do you also use Blender? I don't use Blender anymore. I started out with Blender, it was my first 3D software uh, in 2015 or 14, something like that. But I haven't used it since. Yes, it is addictive, haha. <laughs> Blender in Supreme. Well, I love modeling in Maya, but I love sculpting in ZBrush. Two different things, they work great together. True. Do you listen to music when you work? I... Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It can be quite overwhelming for me. I actually prefer silence. Um... Yeah, I listen to podcasts 
or audiobooks sometimes. Sometimes just watch YouTube on the background. Not the healthiest, I know. And I try to minimize the number, like the, the hours of me just listening to stuff. Because I think it actually messes with your brain because you're not paying full attention to what you're watching like let's say on YouTube it's on the background on another screen um, it actually makes your memory weaker in my experience just because you're training your brain not to pay attention um, to the stuff that's going on in the background it's more of a noise so you don't really get any information out of stuff when you're working and listening to something in the background. I guess it's my personal experience. Some people love listening to books and podcasts and whatnot all the time. So you're telling me I should stop listening to to you while I work. <laughs> no, you can listen to me, but you won't be getting as much knowledge, I guess, because you're not looking what I'm doing, right? Well, you're sort of shifting attention from your sculpt, if you're working on your sculpt, to mine. You don't get as much benefit as from just solely watching, but I'm not gonna tell you not to. Please stay. <laughs> I just, I was just sharing what I've noticed about myself. Okay, so the headpiece is almost done. I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't get as much done as I thought I would, as always. But maybe it's just me being a bit too harsh on myself. Plus, you guys were very active today. I usually don't get as many people, so thank you for jumping on, thank you for chatting with me. I will be signing off soon, in about 8 minutes or so. I need to get to work. I like silence, give me brain a moment of clarity. Give my brain, not me, me brain, my brain a moment of clear, clarity to focus on my art. Yeah, I feel the same. Do you do the retopology part? Did I do it? Yes, last stream, I believe. We used the plugin called C Wrap. It's a plugin you have to pay for. But we transferred good topology onto the bad one. Uh, you can check it out on the previous stream a week ago. Yeah, what else we could do? Maybe I could paint her hair some more. I quite like this reference.
like the way that the hair is painted in here. Blonde. Spotlight projection is off, otherwise you won't be able to paint. Okay, here let's add a few subdivisions. And let's compute the ambient occlusion. Add it in. Make some more.
amazing artist. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks for answering. You're welcome. Do you do any traditional art like painting or drawing or sculpting with real clay? I used to do a bit of everything. I still sculpt out of clay sometimes. Um, drawing... Not so much. I did go to an art school as a kid. Like the age of... The age of like 10. To 14. There's some traditional education there. Lots of boring still lives. Live drawing sessions were fun when we would take turns uh, posing in front of each other. I was a very shy kid, so it was nerve wracking. But I still have very fond memories of it. I think this is it for today, guys. It was um, my alarm clock that went off. I really need to get changed and go to work. Yeah. Here is Zelda. Um. How you used Z-Rep to make a cleaner topology? I didn't make it, so I reused a cleaner topology and then I transferred it from a bad mesh, I mean to, from a good mesh to a bad one. Uh, you can watch the whole stream, like the whole last stream I dedicated to Z-Rep, so you can rewatch it, explain how I do it. How to find the complete playlist of the current creation? Uh, I don't think there is one, but I can talk to the developers, I mean the ZBrush people, and I'll ask them to create one. But just if you go through the live streams, and the past five or six live streams have been dedicated to this character. Hey, I arrived at the end again. Oh no! Looking great, thank you. Um, yep. I'm gonna have to get going, guys. Yeah. Where do you work at? Um, you can Google my um, studio if you go on my art station. Here's my name and there's like where I work. I find myself needing to get back to painting. I find it helps with getting that sculpting bug out sometimes. Oh yeah. It does help me. Mostly with um, just like my mental health. I feel like drawing helps it a lot. But it's just nice to try out different stuff. Sometimes traditional painting can help. Um, with 3D sculpting and vice versa. Thank you for doing the stream. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Thank you guys for 
watching. As always, you can check out my art and follow me on Instagram, Telegram now, um, YouTube channel. What else do I have? An art station. See you next time and stay safe. Happy sculpting. Um, again, I'm gonna shamelessly plug myself in. There is a Telegram channel now. Not sure what's the best way of sharing it would be. Uh, give me one second. I'll just share a link in the chat now. It's a Telegram channel where I post more casual updates about my work and I also notify my followers there about feedback streams or any upcoming streams. So if you'd like, you can follow me there as well. Otherwise, have the amazing rest of your day, night, wherever you are. Bye bye.